This is Heartrepreneur Radio, maximizing your personal and business results by leading with your heart. With your host, Terry Levine. Listen every week as Terry tackles the topics that will help you become a successful heart centered entrepreneur. Be sure to read the blog posts at www.hearttrepreneur.com slash blog. Come back often and add this show to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe in iTunes. You can also follow Terry on Twitter at Mentor Terry and on Facebook.com slash Heartrepreneur Terry Levine. And now here's Terry. Hello and welcome to Heartrepreneur Radio and TV show with Terry Levine. I'm your co-host, Selma Gallant, and I'm excited to be here today. You can connect with Terry, me, and other like-minded, heart-based business owners at Heartrepreneurs with Terry Levine on Facebook. We'd love to have you there. And if you enjoy this show, be sure to hit the like button, and we always love receiving those five-star five star reviews. So today's quote Self-awareness gives you the capacity to learn from your mistakes as well as your successes. It enables you to keep growing. Lawrence Bossidy, I hope I said his name right. Today's show topic is how to be the most powerful you in your business. And our special guest today is Udo Erasmus. Udo is the founder of Udo's Choice, a range of oils, enzymes, and probiotics found in Whole Foods and other health food stores worldwide. Udo was a pioneer in health and wellness space. After being pesticide poisoned in 1980, Udo created the machinery for extracting flax and omega oils. He is the acclaimed author of titles such as Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, and Total Sexy Health. Udo is, world, is a world-class speaker and expert who helps countless individuals worldwide transform their whole body health. Welcome to the show, Udo. I'm really glad to be on. I am excited to have you on here because as soon as I saw that you were my guest for this week, I was like, I know exactly who he is and I've used his product. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that. Yep. For, for quite a few years, actually. Okay. So, yes. And I, um, what I really want to start, because I know you do a lot of work in, in mindset and your story uh, around how you came to be the successful businessman that you are, I think is really important to share because I think what it shows is, I mean, just in what I've shared in your introduction is sometimes what seems like a really crappy situation can end up being your inspiration for something truly amazing that you make a difference for others. And so I'd really like to hear a little bit about your story and how you moved from that poison experience in the eighties and into building such a successful business. Right. Okay. So, um, I got, I got pest, poisoned by pesticides in 1980 because I, I had a gardening job and I got married and we had three kids and my marriage broke up. Mm. I was really upset and I wanted to kill something. So I took a job as a pesticide sprayer because the only reason we make pesticides is to kill things. And that seemed like a really good job to have at the time. I was really careless and I got poisoned by the pesticides I sprayed after three years of carelessness. Mm. And I went to the doctor and said, what do you have for pesticide poisoning? And she, uh, she said nothing. And all of a sudden I became really interested in health. <laughs> that will do it. Yeah. That will definitely do it. Uh, um, so, so they, they, at that time, they had absolutely nothing to support you they with still, the pesticide poisoning. They still don't. Okay. For most pesticides. For, they're, they're, there are, for some, they are. But for most, because they're new all the time. They change all the time. Right. And, and they're applied to kill things when they find out they can kill things with them. Uh, but they don't, you know, usually doing the carefulness is in, in a you know, in a money driven society sometimes yeah. gets, takes the back burner, right? It's talking about uh, heart, heart entrepreneurs, right? Well, <laughs> exactly. And I think, you know, that, that really speaks to why it's so important to have heart based businesses out there because then it's about the people and not about the money. Of course, of course, because money is supposed to serve life. <laughs> well said. Sometimes we forget. And make it go the other way around. 
Well said. I, I, I really born, like that. I was born during the Second World War, so I, I had a pretty rough beginning too from from that. Mm-hmm. So I was always thinking. When I was six years old, I started thinking there must be a way that people can live in harmony, and I'm going to find out how. Six years, and uh, uh-huh. everything I've done in my life has is being driven by that. Uh, what I studied, I, I did science and then biosciences and then psychology and then uh, medicine one year because I thought it was about health and it's actually about disease. So I went back into biological sciences. So that is the backpack story. Um, so the idea of, you know, we talk about, uh, uh, you know, it used to be not my, uh, no, it used to be market share. And then they started talking about mind share. And then I came up with the idea, why don't we begin with heart share? You know, similar similar to what you're saying, right? Right, it's yeah. The idea is that if you can have a heart-to-heart with a person, then you can do everything else with it, with that person, whatever is appropriate and, and useful and necessary. Right. If, if you're not connected from the heart, then all kinds of games games become okay that maybe are not okay. Right. So, so what I, what I'm hearing is, is if, if you're, if you're conducting business from that place of heart, which I know is totally going to resonate with, with what Terry teaches, Mm -hmm. um, then you have, the impact is going to be different because you're not coming from a place of tactics. You're actually coming from a place of how can I be of service? Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, when I when I started trying to figure out how to get healthy, got into the journals. I had the background, so I was reading a, the science about uh, health and nutrition, disease and nutrition, and uh, a couple of things happened that were really interesting. One was omega threes were established as an essential nutrient, which means you, your body can't make them, so it has to be brought in from outside. Okay. That's what essential means. That means these are foundational molecules for body constructions. You have to have them. And life can't make a body if if you don't make sure that it gets the tools. That's the only thing we have to do. Make sure it lands here in our mouth, right? And then after that, life takes takes care of everything, builds it in. If it's wrong stuff, it'll it'll build you a body that doesn't work so well. And if it's the right stuff, then it'll build you a body that works remarkably well. And okay. so, and so, um, uh, and I, and when I, and then I found out 99% of the population doesn't get enough omega threes for optimum health. Every mm-hmm. cell needs them. They are super sensitive to damage by light, oxygen, and heat. More sensitive than any other nutrient, so they're a nightmare to work with. And when I realized when I realized how much care they take and what a nightmare they are to work with, I got really excited and said, oh my God, almost everybody can benefit from getting this stuff if it's made right with health in mind. Mm-hmm. And we could help so many people. And I didn't have any, every, any business background. Mm-hmm. I have no mm-hmm. business background. I mean, I picked up s- some things along the way. But I was, a, I was a science guy. I was a biology guy. I was really interested in everything that was alive. I was not interested in, in it was never <clears> about money. <throat> but I love the idea that I can help people. And in any way I can, and this is a, a, a good reason for why more growth, any, you know, the better I get, the more I can help. And the deeper I go, the more I can help. And if I can live from the heart, that's probably the number one thing that is missing <laughs> where there are problems. And there's nothing that I know that more heart will not make better. And less heart, and less heart didn't cause. And so for me, that was, that was like pretty clear. We were so excited. We were, so, we were on fire. And we literally did it in 1988 when we did our first big tour. We went out in a in a van without air conditioning in the hottest months in the U.S. Uh, from half of June, all of July, all of August, and part of September, half of September. Mm-hmm. 35 states, 17,000 miles by road, 85 cities in 101 days. Wow. 
and just we were telling we would tell everybody <laughs> this incredible thing that we had, which at that point was flax oil. And we had developed a method for making the oils under protection. As I understood, light, oxygen, and heat damage them. So you got to protect them. Otherwise, right. if they get damaged, then they don't work. And so we did, and we said, okay, let's give it the care it needs at the front end so it retains its benefits at the back end. Right. Instead of making a mess at the front end and then trying to use a chemical feast to clean up the mess, which does more damage. So right. that's how that's how that began. And and I lived, I slept on the floor between the driver's seat and the back. And my driver had built himself a bunk across the back. And we literally worked all day and drove all night. Did it all on raw vegetables because we found that if we ate carbs, we got we we felt fell asleep. And if we ate meat, we felt heavy. So I'm not saying that that's what you should do, but I'm just saying our experience was right. we, we could work all day and drive all night eating nothing but raw vegetables. Of course, it made it easy too because we didn't have to cook. We just <laughs> <laughs> and off we went from place to place and talked to everybody who would listen about, about how to make oils with health and why that's important, why omega-3s are important. And the product was good, good enough that people saw results very consistently. Right. So it, it built a buzz in two years. We had turned uh, flax oil into the second highest selling oil in the natural foods industry, which is where we were most active because it was a new product. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The mainstream doesn't usually get too excited about new products when they're really new. So so that no, and if you don't have easy. big business backing you at that point right. and doing all of your marketing for you, we had nothing. We work. I worked with one guy who was on welfare. One guy on was unemployment enjoyment, and uh, and I had written a book, and I I sold I think of that book about eight thousand copies a year, mm -hmm. like a huge income or anything, and then we had this van. <laughs> And uh, and we had a gas card, <laughs> and so yeah. we literally just went out there, and and it was just so fun. It was so fun. I mean, it's still fun. This is now like almost forty years later, and I still love that I get to do that. That I got to do it, and it's still continuing. And uh, you know, I'm doing other things as well. But but uh, yeah, it was. But the the you know, when people ask how do I find my purpose, well, the purpose is the thing that lights you up like a firecracker. And it's already, okay. it's already inside of us. We already have it inside of us. But in order to get to it, taking time to sit still, not to try and think, 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 think it out, but just to sit still and let it come to you. What's already there. It's like even Einstein said that. He said, you know, 99 times I think and think and think and get nothing. And then one day I get quiet and float in silence and the answer comes to me. And that's, well, I think that's why they say a lot of sometimes the best ideas come in when you're busy doing something else. Yeah, or 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 be or busy doing nothing, or unbusy, do, doing nothing. unbusy doing nothing. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, well, I mean, some of some of the greatest ideas that I've ever come up with were actually while I was doing mindless work, right? So puttering around my house, working yeah. in the garden, those kinds of things that are are just quiet activity yeah right so yeah yeah okay. because there's a stream there's a stream in in human beings it's a quiet stream that is really solid that you don't have to pump up that you don't have to say okay where's my motivation okay let me run to somebody and get some more motivation and then in a week the motivation is gone you know there's a there's a much deeper stream that that flows much more powerfully and okay, in that stream are, is, is where all our answers are. That's really interesting because I know I've been seeing a lot of, of activity out in social media lately about how, how do you deal with um, procrastination and that kind of yeah. thing. And, and what, I, what I think I'm hearing from you is the way, to, the way to move past procrastination is to actually get quiet and listen to that still small voice and let it guide you with your direction. Cause if you're procrastinating on something, is there a good chance that what you're taking activity on is not the most valuable direction? That, that's, that's one possibility. The other one is that you're too busy. Even in your procrastination, you're too busy. 
you know, if somebody says I'm procrastinating, I would say to them, do less. But, but really do less. So get really quiet and really leave it, leave it all outside. Okay. Okay. Because, that makes sense. Because you'll get connected to something in you that will either move you forward. You know, how long can you sit still? I'm asking you, Velma. How long can how I long, sit still? How long can you sit, sit still and do absolutely nothing? Shut everything off. Do absolutely nothing. How long can you do that? Uh, well, when I'm meditating, I can I can do that. But if I'm yeah. but if I'm not meditating, mm -hmm. then I generally will do two things at once. If I'm cooking, I'm listening to an audio book. If I'm um, eating, there's you know conversation with my partner, or I find too if 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 he's not around, then. I have an urge and I've been resisting the urge, urge to pick up my phone and look at something or, you know, to do multiple things at once. I find if I'm not actually sitting still, I'm doing more than one thing. So I think that really speaks yeah. to your point. But very, it's, yeah, it's, just, it's not long. Like people can't sit, sit still no. that long. Even if you're a good meditator, you know, you, you meditate for half an hour and then you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like sitting still is 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 a really good discipline, mm -hmm. and it's really hard. So if somebody doesn't feel like working, you say, "Well, then go and sit down and really do nothing." Really, and, and really soon you get tired of doing nothing, and then you but you'll come out refreshed because sometimes we procrastinate because oh, too much going on, too much going on. Oh my god. Right. And we and 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 then we're not doing, but we're still doing a bunch of stuff. And yeah. if you actually really cut out and you get real rest because you don't have to do it. You know, and often the pro procrastination, I should do this, but I really want it. You know, well, well, get, out of, get out of that loop. That's, a, that's just a, 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 a head trip loop. And then more <laughs> often than not, when we're procrastinating, we're doing we are doing things that are really not of value and not moving us forward on what we're really right heart really wants us to move forward on we might be moving forward on some thought things but not heart things right right and i think that may also be the the reason why you press I, you know my pro procrastination for years was i would tr start a project because i thought that something at the end of it would happen Mm -hmm. So I had a goal in mind. And the moment that I would see that this, what I was doing was not going to get me to the goal I had in mind. And the goal was really important to me. I would just quit. You know, and it's like, that's, that's infinite procrastination. <laughs> right? I would just, I would just stop. And sometimes we procrastinate because what we're doing is actually not what we really want to be doing. How will you find out when you're so tied up in, in what you're doing that you don't mm -hmm. take the time to get quiet to actually discover within yourself what are you really about? <laughs> you know, where do you really want to go? So. I, I think that's really important information. And I think that um, your your story actually points to that quite clearly because you guys were there was no procrastinating going on while you guys are driving around in your van eating vegetables and talking in yeah. 35 different states right yeah. and i don't i don't remember ever feeling burned out i don't ever feel like it was a burden even though it was really long days and short nights and mm -hmm. and and in a, in strange places and you know but it, yeah, it was like there was no doubt. I don't remember having any obstacles. We would tell people, you know, here's what, you know, they wanted when the buzz happened, you know, people mm -hmm. would come and they wanted to be, you know, uh, distribute oils, the oils. And we would say we would have a, a two question interview. First question was, do you have refrigeration? Because we refrigerated the oil. That's part of keeping it fresh. So it right. retains benefits. If they said yes, then I would pass him on to my my buddy, who was my driver, and he was the deals maker, and they would figure out if they you know what the, what the prices were and all of that. Mm -hmm. If they said no, my second question was, are you willing to bring it in? If they said yes, I said tell it, let us know when you have it. If they said no, I would say this is a good time to end the interview. 
we were not going to work with people <laughs> who didn't take good care of our precious oil so that we could actually help people with it. So we, and, and you know, this was just like out of the enthusiasm for mm -hmm. being able to help. We set standards like all kinds of them. <laughs> I've never done, never had done anything like that. And it was not, it was like, it was totally second nature because there's something in us that is like that. But not if it's just, you know, not if it's neither here nor there, whether you do it or not. But you have to be on fire for something, right? And, some, right. and I, think, I don't know if there's anything better to be on fire for than to make the quality of life better for every creature that you, you can get your hands on, right? Well, and I, and I love that because it, it really, really puts forward in a very obvious way where your heart was mm -hmm. because if you just said okay well we'll we'll work out this deal and stuff like that and then you found out after the fact that none of these people were following through but you did it yep. because you wanted the deal versus i'm not working with you mm -hmm. unless this means as much to you as it means to us mm -hmm. i mean that's what i heard and the, yeah, and the entire thing the whole time was not about money. It was not about money. You know, if you help a lot of people, enough money to pay your rent will show up, right? Well, absolutely. But and it and never, it, it, like it was never about the money. In fact, the guy who did who did the money stuff, he said, "What do you want out of this deal?" And he said, "I don't know." He said, "Well, if you don't know what you want, I can't get it for you." I said, "Yeah, I get that." But it was mm -hmm. for me. It was what was interesting was that we could get it done. Right. That was, that was interesting. Yeah. 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 I think, I think that's really important for, uh, Oh, I'm going to make sure our listeners know how to find you. Oh, yeah. so getting into some really good stuff here. Yeah. I want to make sure that our listeners um, who, who especially who found value in what we've been talking about today can mm -hmm. find a way to connect with you. And what is the best place? For our listeners to go to, I have a couple. I have a couple of places. Uh, one is called udoschoice.com, U D O S choice.com. And that's where we talk about uh, the, the, the products and why we make products the way we do. And it's so mm -hmm. quite educational, but we talk about products there. And then the other one is called the udo.com, T H E U D O, or udo erasmus.com. And that's impossible to spell for some people. <laughs> the the udo.com. And we talk about all the other stuff that I'm interested in, because it's not just about physical products, but I'm, I'm really interested in anything that has to do with health because health mm -hmm. affect, because everything affects health, everything mm -hmm. affects health. So I'm actually interested in everything. And <laughs> under the umbrella of health, I can, I can look at everything that's going on. And for me, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to know and, and human nature. And I think mm -hmm. human nature is the most neglected arena on this planet. Mm. But if you don't know whether you're a table or a chair, then it's really hard to figure out how to use yourself. That's right. Just, that's just a stupid way of saying it. <laughs> but it's a clear way of saying it. And that's that's what I've been enjoying about our conversation is, is that you 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 bring a lot of simplicity to what it is that you're sharing. So that it's easily understandable and easily absorbed that's royal, <laughs> yeah. by by the mind. So you, it's it's easy for you to share what it is that you're the point you're getting across in yeah. a way that just what anybody yeah. can get. Yeah, and I'm really telling a story uh, mm -hmm. about how it occurred to me. Right. This is a, this is my this is the how my story went. And this is what I was telling myself. Oh my God, we could help so many people. Right. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it was like, well, I, I only want to work eight hours a day. And it wasn't, it wasn't, <laughs> that was never a consideration on the table. We were just on fire to get something done. And we thought, wow, you know, and there has to be a reason, you know, what is your mm -hmm. why for doing all this? Well, we could help so many people. That's, that's a good reason for that's me. An excellent me, reason. I, given that I, I was a refugee before I was three and know what it's like when people don't live in harmony. Mm -hmm. Anytime you help. You're creating more harmony, right? Exactly. So, so, so yeah. this this umbrella of health, where you where you are interested in everything, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that 
you've learned on your journey that you have found really valuable to share? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, one is that inspiration is as important as information. Because if you give people good information, but they're mm -hmm. not inspired, they tend not to act on it. And Makes so sense. when I was doing a lot of traveling and talking, I realized that as important as the information was to present it in a way that that lightened people's load because we, we live in mind ruts and those mind ruts are well-traveled and they're hard to get out of. It takes a lot of effort, but if mm -hmm. you can get inspired, then that actually lifts you out of the, the rut, frees energy. And now all of a sudden doing what you need to do to have a better life seems worthwhile when you're inspired, you know, when you're not inspired, you're heading towards depression. If you get depressed, right. enough, you'll destroy your own body. Right. So, so, you know, you, you don't give, you don't just give good information to somebody who's depressed. Right. That, yeah. yeah. That, yes, that makes so, very obvious sense. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah. So that's one. And then the other thing is like everything affects health. And the things that most affect health are with already within us. And we don't look there. You know, we're looking out for things that we need to be looking into. Okay. Say more about that. Well, like for instance, um, you know, people, everybody wants unconditional love. Okay. okay? Yes. It's a beautiful concept. So where's the unconditional love? So where is it in relationships? Well, my experience was my in, in the old days was, well, I expected she was going to bring it because I saw it in her, you know, it's called falling <laughs> in love. Right. And she saw it in me and she thought I was going to bring it, but she couldn't get in touch with it within herself. And I couldn't get in touch with it within myself. Well, then where was this love in the relationship supposed to come from if neither of us could get to it and bring it in? But then it was like, no, no, you need to bring it to me. No, 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 you need to bring it to me. And then you start to accuse each other of not, of not doing what they need to be doing. But, we're, but neither of us was doing it. So mm -hmm. how do you get to un unconditional love? Well, it's, it, it fills you from top to bot bottom. The energy that keeps us alive is unconditional love by nature. And that unconditional love that life has for the body, you know, if you, st if you think about it that way and you look at it, oh, my God, it does everything. It makes your toenails grow when you're sleeping. You know, I don't know why that's important, but do you know what I mean? It makes the hair grow. Yeah. It digests your food and it beats your heart while you're sleeping. And even if you hate your life, your life is taking the molecules from your digestive tract to the places very in the various places in your body where they mm -hmm. need to be built into the structure. Unconditional love never takes a day off, never sleeps, never asks for a raise, never goes on strike. Right? Twenty four. It might stop and, functioning as well as as it could, but it will never stop doing everything. Well, well it, it won't stop functioning. If I don't give it the building blocks it needs, it can't do its job, but that's not its fault then, is it? That's correct. Right? And, yeah. uh, and, um, and, and it is, if you want to get really deep about it, the energy that we call life is, is number one, is who we are, mm -hmm. because we think of ourselves as the body, and we live as though we were the body. But if I ask you, hey, Velma, whose body is that? You know, most people, you'd probably Mine. say it's my body. Yeah. So you've just told me that you're not the body. You've just told me you're the owner of the body. You've just told me mm -hmm. that your body is your, is your property or possession. So, well, if, if, if that's your possession and you're not the body, who are you? Right. And, right. and in the end, it comes down to, well, I am life. I don't know myself that well because I don't spend much time looking, right? And maybe it might be a good idea to spend more time looking. Mm -hmm. And then when you spend time, more time looking, you be begin to feel that life, that love, that unconditional love that you are. 
And when you embody that, when you feel that, you think maybe it might expand outward from you. You think maybe you'll, you'll do more loving things than when you feel crappy. Well, and that's, there's a, there's a lot in there. There's a lot to unpack <laughs> from that. <laughs> um, but it's, if, if I connect more with the um, energy, the unconditional love that I am, yeah. then I'm actually, it's me who ends up taking better care of my vehicle. Yeah, because you feel unconditionally loved. <laughs> yeah. You well, are unconditional love and you feel unconditional love and and it, it, it's enormous amount of energy to do whatever needs to be done. And tapping into that, that that essence of myself is where the inspiration comes from yeah. to do something with the information. <laughs> uh, yep. That's right. And that's also why we get where where the heart centeredness we're talking about this automatically same. comes life out our heart yeah like life is centered in the heart yeah yeah and and it's a it's a feeling more than a thought it's an energy more than a concept yeah it's a being and and when and when i'm when i feel present in the heart then the mind becomes life's computer. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be the master. Life is the master. In everybody, life is the master. It's omnipresent in you, like everywhere present in your body. Mm -hmm. It knows everything in your body. It runs the whole show. Weighs nothing. Runs the whole show. Omnipresent, and it's all power in your body. That's such a good analogy because you know a computer doesn't turn on and function until you plug it in. Yeah, well, yeah. And the energy goes through it. Right. I mean, in the computer, you've got a power source. Mm -hmm. Life is that power source in a human being. Yep. In the computer, you have hardware. The body is the chassis in, in, the, in the human being. Mm -hmm. And you have a software program. And that's the mind in the human being. Your ideas that set the direction for your journey. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe in opposition to the heart sometimes in, in which case it never works out that well no, no they need to it's it's, it's a team effort. <laughs> team effort right and they all have their place right absolutely absolutely so okay so what i what i've heard today is how important um your heart has been in building your business, in creating your business, in finding your purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still, by the sounds of it, it's still what leads you in as you expand out beyond just the actual nutrition that you, that you started with mm -hmm. in, in other areas that you're, you're creating your business. in. so I really am hearing, um, Okay, this is a perfect way to end it. So we started out with how to be the most powerful you in your business. Mm -hmm. How would you summarize that? I would After say all we talked about. I, I would say that the 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 more the more you spend time being fully present in all of your being, aware, alive, inspired, physical, and um, protective. The more you can spend fully present in all of your being, the more everything else you want to do will fall into place. Excellent. Because that's what you're bringing. That's what you, you can only bring what you bring. And, and if you don't know what you're bringing, then get to know what you're bringing. Spend time, spend time quiet, alone, mm -hmm. to get fully present, and then bring that into the world. We have so many gifts. We have so many, every human being, so many gifts, so much unexplored. And I think this, like, this next century is going to be a lot about all of that because we're really screwing it up mm. when we're not bringing all of ourselves into the situations. That's what we've been doing for the last couple of hundred thousand years. It's time for a reset. 
That's Ab- the root that is yeah, from the heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. When, when we're not bringing all of us to our business, yeah, then. we're actually leaving our heart out of our business. Yeah, and then something's missing. <laughs> and then something's yeah. very clearly and, missing. And when the heart goes out of anything, then it becomes heartless. <laughs> I mean, it's like obvious, but... It is, but if we don't connect those dots, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, how well does our body function if the heart is out of it? Well, if you could, yeah, if you mean life by the heart, nothing yeah. functions. If you mean yeah. if you mean the pump, it nothing functions either. <laughs> exactly. I I think sometimes I think our own body is is a perfect analogy for all of it, right? So, Udo, this was such a fantastic conversation. I have thoroughly enjoyed it, and I and I know it could carry on for another yeah, we need, hour. <laughs> yeah, we need six more hours. <laughs> exactly exactly i want to thank you so much for sharing your time and your wisdom that you've you've grown over the years um with us on the show i i've found true value in what we've talked about today and i know our listeners i'm very confident our listeners would have found excellent value in what you shared today so can you share again a couple of those websites where our listeners can connect with you yeah udoschoice.com and uh, theudo.com. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, and I have a YouTube channel. I'm not hard to find. <laughs> awesome. Very awesome. You know, and I just want to say, I, I, think, I think it's amazing that, you, that you're doing what you're doing in, in terms of heart-centered business. It's really good. Cool. It's really cool. Because sometimes the two get so separated, you know, if it's about money, then there's no heart in it. And if it's about heart, there's no money in it. And it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be together. And it ends up being a better business. The more heart there is in it, the better the business becomes. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. And thank Thank you. you listeners for coming and joining us today. I hope you found wonderful value in this. I know I did. And I want to remind you to go to Facebook and uh, connect with us at Heartpreneurs with Terry Levine on Facebook. And you'll be joining with a lot of heart-based, heart-centered entrepreneurs that are just like you. And we can absolutely impact the world together. Thanks and have a fantastic day. You've been listening to Heartrepreneur Radio, maximizing your personal and business results by leading with your heart with your host, Terry Levine. This show is produced every week for your enjoyment and education. To make sure you never miss a single show, add us to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe in iTunes. You can also read Terry's latest blog posts at www.heartrepreneur.com slash blog or follow Terry on Twitter at Mentor Terry and on facebook.com slash heartrepreneur Terry Levine. Your questions and comments are always welcome and appreciated. Send them to Terry on either Facebook or Twitter. Thank you for listening.